I spent like six hours working on a new intro. Let's watch it. Here we go. <laughs> I love it. Welcome back. Concerned Ape, the creator of Stardew Valley, is working on a new game. It looks awesome. But before we start working on the portraits, let me show you something. Yo, <laughs> this dude was an indie dev, but look at this. This video, which is just early gameplay, got 1.6 million views. That is insane. And then this other uh, trailer that IGN posted got nearly a million views too. Dude, he's so far ahead of like in, in, in regards to indie success. Um, I'm gonna release my first major game, it's called Dwerve. It's a tower defense dungeon crawler RPG. I, um, I looked up, um, Stardew Valley sales, right? And, <laughs> yo! Stardew Valley so sold 15 billion copies. In Stardew Valley, a lot of people drew their own portraits and modded the game. I think that's a really cool way to customize the game. The haunted chocolatier portraits i tried looking them up and it was hard to find them here's one right here but basically i'm going to show you how to draw in this style and draw portraits this size it's 64 by 64 let's get started so here i am in a sprite just creating a, a new project i'm not going to make it 64 by 64 because i like to have references in my artwork and like mess with colors and stuff. So if you want to use this pixel art program, please use the link in the description to buy it. I get a tiny little kickback. I'm not sponsored by them. Let me show you a cool trick about the canvases. Let's say you have something like 16 by 16, right? And you want it to be four times bigger. Instead of doing the math in your head, you can just hit the multiply and four button and it'll multiply it for you there. So to see the grid, we can go to view and grid and grid settings. So we want the width to be 64 and the height to be 64 because remember, we're going to be working within that 64 by 64 uh, grid space. So boom, there we go. There's our grid. If you go to preferences here, edit preferences, what we can do is click on grid and here you can change the grid color and the opacity of it. So I like to put the opacity kind of low. I don't like it to distract me from the work I'm working on. Let me show you a cool little trick. If you're on a Windows machine in the bottom left corner, you can search snip and every Windows machine should have this tool. It's called snipping tool. And basically it lets you cut out parts of whatever's on your monitor and then use it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit play here and we're going to get, um, oh, I missed it. <laughs> I have to hit cancel and go back. I wasn't quick enough. All right, here we go. I don't want this red bar in there, so I just gotta time it right. Okay, and now, the red bar appeared. Ah, uh, whatever, anyway, so I'm gonna grab Lily's portrait here, and I'm gonna hit the copy button. And now, we can paste that into our project. That's huge. So let's just shrink that. You can hold shift so that way the aspect ratio stays the same. It doesn't get messed up. And I'm just going to shrink it to about the size that we would want our reference to be. I'm not going to draw this exact same portrait. Um, we're just going to use this as a reference, maybe get a skin tone or whatever. And I think by me shrinking it and scaling it up, I don't actually think this is exactly how that portrait looked. If we look at this um, reference here, that's probably more accurate. But whatever, like I said, we're not literally redrawing this. I'm gonna do a female face, I think, first. Then if you guys like these uh, videos, you can tell me what character or what kind of character to do uh, next. Okay, so I'm gonna start by throwing down some shapes that are about the same size. So we got the head here, and then we got the shoulders about here. I'm almost tracing over this. And now what I can do is um, I can just move it. <laughs> Move it over here, and we got our basically our wireframe. If we look at Concerned Apes style, you can see that everything has an outline. Even the mustaches have an outline. So we're gonna go. We're gonna do this outline style. I don't think that we should go um, all the way black for uh, the outline of this face. It'll be too drastic. But what we do want to do is we want to get pretty close. And the way I like to do it is, let's say we do add a black outline here. 
all you need to do is grab the skin tone go to about 50% opacity um, you know maybe more maybe less and then color it on top of that and now you have a color that blends those two now for certain those two colors are you know similar enough that they should blend nicely so here we are we're just outlining <laughs> I said here we are here we are just <laughs> outlining this face and the reason why this is important is because we really want to establish that jaw now if you're making a female you're gonna make the neck um, skinnier I mean don't make it Rugrats <laughs> Rugrats skinny <laughs> you remember how skinny the Rugrats necks were it was ridiculous when if we're doing the character's face a little bit from the side you don't want to put the neck in the center the neck is actually gonna be um, a little bit off to the side and a, a realistic neck uh, from the side like this would almost um, uh, take up the whole jaw space and something you can even do I've seen done before it depends on your style is you actually have the jaw like this connect to the neck here the next thing we need to do is instantly right away I'm gonna say draw put a shadow there before you forget to add um, add a shadow add a shadow under that neck and since the chin sticks out more the shadow would be bigger there so we want to extend the shadow a little bit more here near the chin I actually like this shadow color and I still want to show the jaw you can I, I can just use the shading of this so it kind of blends in a little bit more all right fantastic she has an awesome jaw shape actually <laughs> I'm gonna go a little more anime with this all right guys I'm gonna go a little bit more anime and have the that pointy pointy chin right it's, just, it's a little bit more female to have that pointy chin you can grab this face boom move it over and now there's more of a pointy chin However, I don't like to have objects end at the, at, at the exact same position. So this point right here is where the is where the neck ends and the chin ends. You see that? So what I'm gonna do is grab the entire head and I'm just gonna move it one over. And now you can see that the chin line doesn't end exactly where the neckline ended. And I, I just think that looks I think that looks better. Of course, we need to fix this uh, neck lump here. And um, since it's a female, I'm actually not going to give her like these, uh, you know, whatever muscle that is. So to hide the jaggedness, we have to use um, shading. And I'm putting it around all the edges of the face because that'll make that that smooths all of these jaggies. And I think we could put it here or whatever. And n now there's a, a bit more of a, a smooth shape. However, since we want to smooth this part right here how you do that is i'm going to go to 50 percent opacity and we use this color this in between color to to blend that basically to make something a little bit smoother you just create more gradients i think the neck should be even thinner and i think um it needs to curve uh, a little bit <laughs> we don't really have enough pixels to do that I'm gonna protrude the head out more so I'm gonna grab the head again and I'm gonna like stick it out uh, whoa what did I do I don't know what I don't know what I did just control Z control Z with stuff like that happens all right so um, I think I hit control D and I accidentally did not press D but let's see how this works is that too protruding Man, you got that. that shit is sticking out too much now, right? I think also that the face doesn't need to be that skinny. Let's try. Let's try making it different shapes by moving it around. I want it to somewhat look like an anime face, but we also want it to be somewhat natural. So I feel like this has a better blend than the previous one had. And let me just put that there that there I think that's pretty good since we're doing an outline we might as well put the outline on the neck right there and probably right here we'll fix that later if it, if it doesn't align right but um wow look at that it's it's starting to have some form isn't it um, a, a lot of the art that Concerned Ape does you can't see in this portrait but Concerned Ape uses kind of like one highlight color to show the form of the of the face so for example we're gonna grab this skin tone and we're gonna grab we're gonna go just a little bit lighter and I also decreased the, the saturation when I went lighter and 
check this out if we just put a few pixels like um, here all of a sudden it starts looking like there's a, a nose there right and if we put a few pixels here all of a sudden it starts looking like there's cheeks there so with these highlights you can create a lot of shapes in the face so but don't you know don't go overboard you can also highlight the forehead you could we could also highlight the chin a little bit and um these highlights are going to be uh awesome maybe even the neck a little bit here um how can i get carried away with the highlights I, I feel like the forehead highlight here might not be necessary so with the chin shadow oftentimes um concerned ape will have a, a, a gradient in it and i think that's fine too whatever we can add a gradient like this it gives uh the neck um more shape too and this is an opportunity to also kind of put neck muscles or stuff in it if you're drawing uh, a dude concerned apes style is to kind of give the nose a bit more of an outline he does so much shading in that nose so i'll show you some of those tricks um right now so let's go ahead and um i don't think we need to go fully dark but the nose is going to be something like this that's a very very simple nose but that's really all you need the rest we can do with sort of like highlights and shading so if we want the nose to be kind of like a little button nose then i would put a highlight right there and then for the shading i would shade under the nose because you want the nose to look like it's protruding right and now you can see that with that blending it's harder to see the nose and the part that would be the darkest would be underneath so we can darken the outline for that part unfortunately i do think this might be too dark but if we look at the preview it's not that bad maybe just these two colors need to blend because they're too far apart so what i'll probably do is grab that color go halfway click there and actually I, I like that color and click there i like that blend that, that how that blended i'm gonna add that blend to the jaw here that'll smooth that out a little bit more i think just that one pixel smoothed that out a tiny bit more and i, I don't like i don't if i'm switching colors so for example we're going from this a very dark brown to this transition i don't think it's a good idea to switch it when you go from a from like two to one in that part of the curve unless you're really trying to point out that a part is sharper than another but this makes having this these two colors be different makes this piece right here stand out too much so i do think we need to color in that one pixel there in order for that transition a uh, color transition to look smoother so if we wanted to blend this nose a little bit more make it look a little bit smoother i would put um, a pixel right here it's that technique that i was telling you about to make the line look like it's bending a little bit more and this nose is way too far left so for the mouth for now i'm just going to try to sort of like pick a location for it and i'm going to use this um, light color and we actually want to blend the edges and then have the center of it be darker so something like this i made the mouth a little too small it would need to be a little bit bigger something like that it looks a little bit low it's a little bit funny this is the part where we're going to move this stuff around we could even put it on different layers i think the nose could move one pixel over it, it'll drastically change how the face um, looks and it really depends on what kind of characteristics you want that character to have but um, i think these are pretty decent locations for now maybe the smirk needs to be only on one side like that and you can also put a little highlight under the chin but if you have a uh, like uh, sorry under the lip but if you have a highlight on the chin then under the lip and on the chin might be a bit too much but this highlight down here under the uh the line for the mouth it, it, it can also it's it's highlighting kind of like the the lip right so this can make it look like the character has uh, uh bigger lips and if you want the character to look like they have bigger lips this is the perfect spot to put the lipstick on to tint everything here so what i could do is i can do a new layer and um, i'm just going to call this lip color and what we can do here is i can uh, choose uh, red and i'm going to saturate it a lot I probably shouldn't saturate it this much i'm going to saturate this this and that um wait this part definitely needs to be a little less saturated and now if i double click on that layer i can lower the opacity there's also different blending modes so for example if you have it on the highest opacity what you can do is click multiply 
and it, it'll multiply it with that color. So you can mess around with that kind of stuff. But I think that normal is fine. You just lower the opacity. That, that type of blending is really easy for us to understand. And so now there's a red tint to um, the lips, as you can see. But a cool thing you can do is you can go to edit, adjustments, hue and saturation. And now since this is on a separate layer, here we can mess with the hue and we can check out what the lips would look like blue or green or yellow or whatever maybe a little bit pink and i'm looking at the preview right now and i kind of like this sort of uh, purpley pink color so i'm just going to hit ok and this is on a separate layer now so whenever we want to mess with the lip color we can just use uh, this layer it's a way for you to non-destructively edit your work and those kind of habits are really good I think that I'm, I'm getting excited now that we put in the lip color. It's that there's a tiny little bit of personality coming out in this uh, in this character. But you know what? I think this video is long enough, so I'm gonna make this a multi-part series. So, for example, the next video we might focus on the hair because I really don't want to rush each of these steps because a lot of the aspects of creating a portrait are kind of complicated and there's plenty to say. When the portrait's done, I'm adding it to my Pixel Pete's free R asset pack. And any of the, my R assets in this R asset pack you can use for free in your video games. You don't even need to give me credit. I don't care. Just follow me on itch so you're notified whenever I add stuff to the um, R pack. And, you know, that's my gift to you for being a fan. Somebody drew animal portraits for all the characters in Stardew Valley. That's pretty funny. Um, in the comment section below, let me know what hair color you think that this girl should have. And I'll, I'll go with the most thumbed up one. I'll see you guys and gals next week. You better show up. A death life. Thanks to my Patreons, I was able to buy this transition pack and make the videos cooler. My Patreon is Sad Slime. I'm going to call us the Sad Slime Squad from now on. And I just want to give a shout out to my top donors. Kyle, you the MVP.